Hi folks, I'm here with another video. Uh, today I'm going to talk about my top five authors. Now this is something that I think I've discussed several times uh, in the uh, chats and my live streams, but I've never done a video on it. So I thought I'd do a video on it today because someone asked. Uh, it shouldn't come as any surprise who my top five is. I, I was going to do the top ten, but to be honest, when I looked at it, six through ten could be shuffled anytime, anywhere in, 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 the, in the mix there. Um, and well, I don't want to give spoilers, so I'll do it later. But there, there, there was about five authors that I can just juggle around uh, about loving. But anyway, here's my solid top five, and it should come as no surprise if you've watched a lot of my live streams. But number five is Kathy Tires. I truly, truly, truly love Kathy Tires. I think she is a very underrated author in the expanded universe. I believe that, and what I love about her is that she chose a different path. She never took the easy way out. Remember I told you in Trusa Bacora, that happens the day after the Death Star. And it was, what, the second book out after uh, Timothy Thrones trilogy? You know, so it's the next book out. Or, or maybe it's Courtship Princess Leia. E either way, it was one of the earlier ones. All she had to do was just give us an Empire versus Rebellion story, right? Because it makes sense because the fight should still be going on. It's an easy slam dunk what she should have done. But no, she went in a different direction. She said, no, we're beyond that. We need to keep moving. And the thing is, there hadn't been many stories after that Empire versus Jedi. We would have been all okay with that. We would have just loved it and accepted it. But she took a different path and she kept doing that. She kept doing every book. There was an easy path she could have gone. She said, no. I'm going to do something different, even in her short stories, which I thought were so unique when she talked about oh, some of the tale stories, and she take different paths with different characters that I would never think of. I, it's just, I would love to talk to her because her creative insight on where she wants to go is vastly different from where everyone would, you would expect them to go. Honestly, I'd love to meet her, love to get her autograph and everything, but I'd love to pick her brain on how she came up with so many awesome ideas, which were bold choices too, because she could have easily, again, gone the easy route and made everyone happy, but she's like, no, nope, we're going to do this my way, and I really, really respect her for that. Uh, my number four and three are interchangeable, but I, I did decide firmly who I want. And number four is Stackpole. Obviously, I love his X-Wing series. It's so fantastic. Uh, his weakest book for me is I, Jedi, as everyone knows. But other than that, he's a very solid author. Even the stuff he wrote for the Ninja Order was great. I've talked to him several times before. I've been in one of his writing workshops. And he's just an awesome guy. All-around all, all awesome guy. And he is the person who made Wedge Antilles the household name he is today. There's no way anyone would know who that is. Uh, or who that was, I should say, without Michael Stackpole's series. It's just so impactful. Now, obviously, number three, you probably know what I'm going to say, but Aaron Alston. Aaron Alston also wrote uh, the Race Squadron series, and then again with the Rogue Squadron, he also wrote things uh, for uh, other, uh, you know, New Joe Order and whatnot. Uh, and both of these, both writers are very similar. Stackpole and Alston were. They could get, they could give you, you know, happy moments. They could give you sad moments. But the reason Alston beats out Stackpole is a few reasons. Alston's weakest book was Mercy Kill. It wasn't bad. It just is definitely, in my opinion, his weakest in a sad ending to the X-wing series. Um, I'd like to go on a high note, not a flat note, which I kind of felt Mercy Kill was. Other than that, though. No one made me laugh harder than Austin. No one made me tear up. No author made me tear up but Aaron Austin. And that's why I submitted his name as number three firmly. I can sleep well on that because the man, and, and the thing was, he was making you laugh before that and then he gut punched you when you were laughing. Ooh, that's an emo emotional roller coaster, and that takes a lot of talent. And Mr. Ald Alston had tons of talent, and he is an author we will all truly miss. Uh, number two, and no, everyone's going to know this, it's also Quality Autism's favorite author. It's uh, Troy Denning. Uh, now, Quality thinks that the Joyner King series is the best trilogy. However, even though it is good, um, I, I love his stuff from New Joe Order. I, again, his weakest book would probably be Tatooine's Ghost for me, even though I enjoyed the overall story arc that Leia's going to, you know, trying to get a moss painting from uh, Alderaan, but also Undercover Thrawn is. There's that little tie in there. Also, you have the squibs, the three squibs in it, which are hilarious. But the whole cram in everything we know, because we just saw episode one. So we want to show that episode one happened. 
and they know a little bit about episode one now. I just thought that was so unnecessary to do. And so the book overall, I generally did not like the idea of the book because I know how it came about. But some of the story plot points and everything in there is, is, is good with, for Troy Denning. And also, this is someone else I've met. He holds no secrets, at least for me. He opened up and told me what plans, or that, as, as far as he knew, they had for future stories. And no one else has been as open as Troy Denning has. And I absolutely, star by star, one of the best books ever. Absolutely love it. Love it, love it, every minute of it. It was just so good. That's the pinnacle of Star Wars, in my opinion. Folks, number one, you know it. It's Kevin J. Anderson. I've said it a million times. I love the Jedi Academy trilogy. I think it's fantastic. Uh, he invented the double-bladed lightsaber, which George Lucas uh, supposedly read and loved it so much, he wrote it down for the prequels. Uh, that's one of the things he borrowed on top of Timothy Zahn's name for Coruscant. Uh, Kevin J. Anderson also was the man who invited, gave an open hand invitation to have the comic books join them in the continuity. Remember, Dark Empire kept getting questions. Are y'all part of the continuity? They said, we don't know. We don't think so. And then Kevin J. Anderson says, yes, you are. And I'm going to make it. He worked with Tom Beach. He continued on where Tom Beach left off, wrote a fantastic Tales of the Jedi series and a fantastic bonus ending, ending on top of that, which I didn't want at first. And then was like, oh my gosh, they made it better. It's like Christopher Tolkien saying, I'm going to write uh, Return of the King ending better than Dad. And you're like, don't do it. And then somehow it becomes magically better, 10 times better. And that's what Tells the Jedi did. So even in the comic books, Kevin J. Anderson for me hits home runs. Uh, this guy's amazing. He wrote so much during that Bantam era. He contributed more than any other author. Um, I don't know why he was never invited to do anything for Del Rey, but I know a lot of fans were not uh, uh, Kevin J. Anderson fans. The EU fans were not Kevin J. Anderson fans. A lot weren't. But I absolutely love him. I've met him several times. He's a super nice guy. Signed anything. And his Young Jedi Knight series, I would argue, uh, brought in a second new generation of fans. People who are 10 years or younger than me, that's how they got into the expanded universe was that Young Jedi Knight series. And uh, you, you, know, you, you may hate him, but I think it's true. And honestly, the Young Jedi Knight series is a fantastic series. It's a fantastic series all the way through. It's so good. Um, so for me, Kevin J. Anderson, my number one. But hey, folks, there's mine. What are yours? If it, By the way, six through ten, uh, James Lucino came very close to being on this list. His weakest book was Cloak of Deception, which was just kind of bland, but not bad. Uh, I, John Jackson Miller can somehow do excellent stuff and then do crappy stuff, but I, I, you know, I like his stuff anyway. Um, Barbara Hamley. Sorry, I know a lot of people hate her, but I, I like her. And um, who? Oh, Dave Wolverton. Even though he's wrote one excellent novel, he wrote a bunch of short stories, some children's stories. He's good, but just didn't write enough to get in this series. And off the top of my head, I can't remember who the last one was. It sure wasn't Karen Travis. All right, folks, that is all the time I have for now. But let me know who are your favorite authors. Let me know in the comments below, and I'll see you next time.